Thanks for tuning in. I'm Amanda Ziede with Washington Exec, and with me today to chat about her work in the geospatial intelligence space, as well as some upcoming events, is Rhonda Schrank, the CEO of the U.S. Geospatial Intelligence Foundation. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rhonda. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to talk with you today, Amanda. Of course, me too. So to get started, can you briefly tell us what the U.S. Geospatial Intelligence Foundation is and a bit about its mission? Absolutely. Happy to do that. So we'll start at the very beginning. USGIF is a 501c3 nonprofit educational foundation, and we're the only organization of its kind dedicated to serving the entirety of the geospatial intelligence community. We seek to promote the geoint tradecraft and develop a stronger geoint community. Our community is big. It includes more than 4,000 members, at least, and it's from every level of government, industry, academia, professional networks, and individuals. Um, and when I say government, we, we define that as a broad group. We welcome defense and civilian federal agencies and state and local governments. In fact, we welcome anyone who develops or applies any kind of geospatial intelligence to address national security challenges. We believe everyone can benefit from our diverse programs and events. Um, and if it's okay with you, I wanted to just like step back a little bit and talk about, you know, what is geospatial intelligence? Um, so at least for me, it's really easy to understand. Geoint um, discovers and explains the five W's and an H. So who, what, where, why, when, got them all, and how of basically everything that happens on, above, right? Think space or below the earth's surface. And there's two terms. So the first one is geospatial, and that's the art and the science of understanding all human activity and the ever-changing physical features on the earth and that's both natural and human made. Um, and then geospatial also brings together all of the tools, the technologies and techniques we use to identify, measure, describe, and analyze that information. And then the second part of the equation or the uh, acronym is intelligence. And by that, we mean the data, the knowledge, the information, meaning and insight that gives you decision advantage. So when our discipline was created, 20 years ago, the community didn't really understand the term nor the incredible power of this um, then nascent discipline. So back to USGIF, our, um, our mission is to bring the community together to further the tradecraft, to spur innovation, and to create platforms for rich networking. So on a side note, I read an interview this morning by Jack Dangerman, the president of ESRI, and he gave his three keys to success as hard work, friendship, and con contributing to our world. Um, and gosh, that really resonated with me. I, I not only agree, but I opine that USGIF helps the community to su achieve success right along these same lines. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for giving us a bit of that background. We see the acronym in this industry all the time. So it's it's nice to have some, some context built around that. So Rhonda, tell us a bit about how you got involved with the organization. All right. So I'm going to go back again, um, as I did with the first one, if that's okay with you. So I am very proud to be a geographer from way back. I studied both physical and human geography at the University of Maryland, Baltimore campus. And then I started my career right out of college as a cartographer converting paper maps for the government um, from DMA that ended up being NGA and a geospatial analyst helping to make sense of phenomena on this earth using GIS platforms. Loved it. Shortly after that, I got recruited by the government, um, by the then CIA, to work in their imagery center. So um, I began this wonderful journey. And shortly after that part of the journey began, two things happened. I fell in love with combining my, my geospatial skills that I had brought with me to my new imagery skills. And then serendipitously, albeit separately, the federal government agreed 
not necessarily with me, but with the notion that these two things needed to come together. And in 1996, stood up the National Imagery and Mapping Agency that combined all of the government, the federal mapping and imagery entities. So fast forward, I'm going to save you a little bit there, 20 years of growing and learning and contributing to national security and my government capacity. I had the opportunity to join USGIF. That was about four years ago. And each and every day, I thank my lucky stars that I am able to contribute uh, in this capacity. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. So I understand that the GeoInt Symposium is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. So congratulations on this amazing milestone. Yeah. What have been the most important developments in the growth of the GeoInt community during the last 20 years? Absolutely. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. So um, for 20 years, the symposium has been a unique and unparalleled gathering of the GeoInt community. This year, from May 21st to the 24th, we expect to welcome to St. Louis more than 4,000 people from across the globe. Our theme this year is from maps to metaverse, and that highlights how far the discipline has evolved during these past two decades. Um, throughout the, the 20 years that we've been um, hosting this, and yes, I've been going to them for most of all of the 20 years, first as a Govey, um, and now as a, a staff member, the symposium has highlighted most uh, the most significant technological and analytic developments in GeoInt. Um, and I think perhaps one of the most important is the soaring demand for all types of commercial imagery. Um, 20 years ago, the government was almost the only game in town, and by and large, it was classified. So fun fact, as an industry, Fortune magazine recently estimated that the global geospatial market is expected to more than double by 2030, from 63 billion to almost 150 billion. That's amazing. Um, so all of that to say the competition has really flourished. Um, for source providers um, today, a number of our members Maxar, Planet, Black Sky, Cabela, Spire, and Hawkeye 360, to name only a few, now provide a wide range of largely unclassified geospatial data. And that data, it continues to grow in its capabilities. So we not only are looking at electro-optical imagery, which is the, the physical picture that we're used to seeing, but we're also able to see hyperspectral, infrared, ultraviolet, all day, all night, all weather, imagery, and even radio frequency. Um, so a lot you'll hear a lot of us talk about the, the deluge of data. Wow, it's coming fast and furious. And with that, it's really testing the, the human capabilities to be able to process and understand all of it. Um, I would say, we can't, right? And, and if you, you talk with many of the leaders across the community, they agree. So what that's driving is the necessity of that human machine teaming, right? Of bringing in artificial intelligence and machine learning to help make sense of the data and let the, the humans do the higher level sense making. Um, I, it's, for me, it's, it's very, very exciting. Awesome. It sounds like it is. And and the industry and the space itself is expanding so much. So what are some things that people should know about and look forward to at the GeoInt Symposium? So we talked a little bit about the, the, um, the theme from Maps to Metaverse. So really what we're paying homage to is St. Louis was um, home to Defense Mapping Agency, where much of the mapping across um, the federal government has happened over um, many, right? Um, more more decades um, than, than I can count today. Um, and then to today, as GeoInt is helping us to shepherd in the metaverse era. And, you know, some people are like, oh, metaverse, is that a better, is that a buzzword? Yeah, maybe so. Um, for better or worse, we're already in the metaverse. So a lot of people use the term loosely these days. 
we at USGIF define it broadly as a digital realm where people seek insights from the gamut of geospatial data using virtual reality, augmented reality, multi-dimensional models and simulations, as well as video and audio. So for those four days in St. Louis, we feel like this symposium, the GeoInt Symposium, is going to be the center of the GeoInt metaverse. Um, and there we're going to shine the spotlight on the rapid evolution from traditional flat two-dimensional mapping towards real-time analysis grounded in metaverse technologies and applications. The program, and Amanda, I really do hope that you are there to join us. Um, I know that I'm biased, but I think this is one of our best programs ever. Um, it, we will kick it off on Sunday morning, um, bright and early, at the, the portion that we call GeoInt Forward. And that's one of the best keep, kept secrets, right? And it doesn't need to be a secret of the event where we look at the what's new, right? And what's coming. And we look at some of the adjacencies outside of our normal national security lane. So um, what are we going to talk about? We'll have NGA's Todd Johansson to kick off the program. We'll have panel discussions on the metaverse, generative AI, privacy and security, a, an imperative topic these days. And then we will end the formal program that day with a presentation from Lieutenant General Maria Gervais, who's the Deputy Commanding General and Chief of Staff for the US Army Training and Doctrine Command. And I think she wins for the longest title. Um, and then that evening, we will host our welcome celebration. It's open to all conference attendees, so 4,000, think 4,000 of your closest friends, and promises to be an excellent opportunity to connect and to reconnect with fellow GeoInters. And it'll be fun. We're hosting it this year at the brand new um, Armory STL. Look it up online. I heard, I was talking with a friend last week at Space Symposium who said, Armory, that sounds boring. I was like, there's no way. There is so much to do and see. Um, you will not want to miss that event. And that's just day one. So then the formal program begins on Monday and we'll have three days of keynotes and panel discussions featuring many, many, many luminaries, including the DNI. This will be her first time visiting the symposium. The directors of NGA, NRO, DIA, three former NGA directors, one which is our board chair, and all former USGIF CEOs. We'll also have more than 50 hours of focused training sessions. We'll have three speaking areas on the exhibit floor, hosting more than 100 speaking sessions. And oh, the exhibit floor, by the way, not to be missed, will feature more than 240 unique organizations. It, there's something for everyone. And then I touched on networking a little bit ago. There'll be lots of networking um, sessions throughout the day. Each afternoon on the exhibit floor, there'll be a networking, a specific networking session. And then Tuesday afternoon is sort of fun. We have a young, a very vibrant young professionals network that will be hosting their, their networking session in the afternoon at the T-Rex, and it's not limited, they let me come. So everybody can come, um, specifically hosted by the Young Professional um, Network. And then afterwards, Greater St. Louis, um, one of our strategic partners uh, with many community um, organizations, is hosting a party on the plaza, they're calling it. It's at Keener Plaza overlooking the St. Louis Arch. It's a beautiful setting. It will be outdoors. Um, we have um, Rain or Shine will be hosting it. So um, please come and join us for that. Wow. This sounds like a really awesome, fun and interesting event. Um, I think this area of the industry is naturally the most fascinating. So thank you for describing those events. That sounds very exciting and informative, um, especially considering how the market is expanding and all, the, all the, the new technology things we're talking about, like the metaverse. So very cool. Rhonda, before we close, are there any other programs or events uh, that perhaps won't top the symposium, but th that the uh, geospatial intelligence community should be aware of? Yes, thank you so much for asking that. Each year we 
designer initiatives to improve the community by focusing on each part of our motto, advance the tradecraft, build the community, and accelerate innovations. One of the programs that I am most proud of is our scholarship program. USGIF currently offers more than $100,000 of financial assistance every year to students ranging from high school to PhD programs. And the submissions for those scholarships are open now. They will stay open for the next several weeks. Go to our, our homepage and, and, and look at it. We are really excited about helping to drive the pipeline uh, for our burgeoning uh, professional um, or tradecraft. And then, um, yes, it's we need to get together more than just once throughout the year. So we provide touch points throughout the year. We have 10 working groups um, ranging from regions to technical topics um, to DEI. Um, those meet anywhere from once a month to, to once a quarter. And you can find information about those on our website. Uh, and then we have other programs. I'm very excited. We have a new three-part breakfast series called Women as Leaders that will be kicking off in July. It's free to all. It will be in person in the Northern uh, Virginia area. And then we also have our Geo Interaction Tuesdays that will resume. We have our Mission Focus series and we'll wrap up the calendar year with our annual Geo and Community Week where we'll host a two-day event at the NGA complex in Northern Virginia and um, conclude it with a black tie gala honoring this year's Lifetime Achievement Awardee. And the announcement to who that will be will happen at the GeoInt Symposium. So um, I guess like wrapping up for me, at USGIF, we have a vision. Every nation, every industry, every consumer benefits from real-time GeoInt. It reshapes every aspect of our world, government, defense, industry, daily life, and, and basically the future of our planet. The pace of the integration into all of our lives will continue to accelerate. This integration of existing and innovative technologies and processes will mean every company, every government, every institution of tomorrow will be a GeoInt company. Right, wonderful note to end on. And uh, for all those interested, I can I will include uh, some links below for the symposium and some of the other events that Rhonda mentioned. So be sure to check them out. Rhonda, thank you so much for joining me today and talking through all this with us. Appreciate it.